Just about 11.30 here. Getting started. Really getting into it here shortly. Welcome to Artful Connections with Art Force Iowa. I'll be your mentor today. My name is Jonathan Fusco, and we will be working on an old still life. This is when I started actually on a, a stream a few weeks ago, and I talked really big talk that I was going to get it done later in the week, and then I just got stuck doing a bunch of other projects, and I say a bunch, a handful of other projects really, and uh, just to never get around to this. We started so many paintings on here that I thought maybe we should, we should work on finishing one. Art Force Iowa's Artful Connections. My name is Jonathan Fusco. I'll be your artist mentor today. I invite you to paint along with me. Love to see what you are working on at the end in the comments below. Or if you just want to hang out, feel free to just hang out. That's cool too. What I'm doing right now is um, so we'll be working on uh, the painting will be dry. Right now, I mean, it's been sitting around for weeks, so um, everything's pretty much dry. I did make this mark earlier, um, and a little mark right there. So we'll be working on dry, so this will be kind of nice. I'll be able to place my hand on the piece and be a little more precise, but I do want to try to float my hand as much as I can, in part because it captures a little more of that wild energy. And also, because pretty soon it's going to be a little hard to remember what's wet um, and what's dry. Um, so I'm just kind of mixing up colors at the moment that I'm pretty sure I'm going to need. Getting some color on a few of the brushes I know I'm going to be using. Pulling out the uh, cadmium lemon. Everyone's favorite. Everyone's favorite. Absolutely, everyone. I like this piece. Um, it's been staring at me for a while, saying, hey man, when are you going to get me done? I said, in due time, and then it just hasn't happened. So, yeah, um, so first I'll mention why I don't think the piece is finished, in case it isn't immediately obvious. Uh, I mean, I guess you could probably walk away from this thing and it would be fine, but what I want um, is a little more excitement. It's just kind of dead. There's a lot of dead spots where the eye just wants to stop. So we will be building up the... Um, well, we'll be building up the forms a bit, like uh, intensifying the sense of uh, dimension to everything. But um, also uh, trying to create a little more visual interest in the more flat areas. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the way it is. I just want more. Um, there's a companion piece to this that I've already finished. Um, and in fact, for example, I might go grab it. It's literally right here. So, for example, this would be what I consider a companion piece. And even in the dead zones, you'll notice um, there's just a little bit more going on in the fabric. Um, and so the goal will be to kind of turn this piece into sort of becoming a mirror. Or not a mirror, but rather a companion to the, um, the, the other uh, painting of the same bottle. Uh, I don't want it to look the same, necessarily, but I just want a similar energy in it uh, so that they could hang well next to each other, potentially, or at least feel a part of a whole. Um, if you're just joining us, welcome to Art Force Iowa's Artful Connections. My name is Jonathan Fusco. I'll be your art mentor today. Um, we're working on 
an ongoing piece that I started weeks ago. I was talking pretty big game back then about finishing it that week, and then I definitely didn't. I got caught up doing other things, working on another project. Um, so we're going to do it today, because it's been mocking me and staring at me every time I'm in here, saying, when are you going to finish me? And um, I decided that today we'll give it a shot. We'll see if we can finish it. Um, and, uh, yeah, basically what I'm going to be trying to do is bring a little more life to it. We, it's honestly a pretty good start. Um, we have our sense of lights, we have our darks uh, cutting through. Pretty decent sense of form, roundness, uh, dimension. But, um, yeah, the flat areas aren't my favorite. Um, probably going to add just a little bit of the backdrop. I'm working from a photo today. Probably going to add a little bit of a backdrop. Just carve in some basic gestural stuff to kind of suggest the being there. And then bring the dimension forward. Uh, and add a little more excitement into the more dead areas. And uh, well, yeah, we'll just see how far we get today. Um, I find this stage of painting can go on for quite a long time, depending. Um, but I think it'll be fun to talk through and hang out this morning. I do want to see what you're working on. Um, everyone in our force would love to see what you're working on. If you're painting along with me or drawing along with me, please do post in the comments below if you are painting with me today. Um, if you're just hanging out, that's totally cool. Stoked to have you. Um, and I am currently trying to decide what to attack first. So I think, so I'm trying, the, the apple has a really nice range of reds in it. And right now I'm mixing up sort of a magenta-ish, pink-ish, bright red. So I think we're going to go ahead and throw some of that really cool, like, cool red on right here and just see how that feels. Yeah, so that's actually pretty awesome. I think that's what we want. And um, working from a photo, honestly, is a little bit easier. So um, the, the only downside is that it's not exactly the same angle I was working from. Uh, when I was had this in person, and um, the lighting is ever so slightly different because, you know, as the day changes, um, where the light is coming through the window, uh, and how the outdoor light reflects off of the object changes. So I didn't, I didn't get it at exactly the same time as when I started. Uh, the photo wasn't exactly the same, but here's our photo um, on the other phone here. And uh, yeah, let's dive in. Let's dive in. Let's get real. So there's a lot of cool stuff happening in the Apple, and capturing some of the subtlety is going to be a little bit tricky. Um, this is really nice reflection um, on the Apple. That's um, basically it's the rim of the cup reflecting on the Apple, and it's super subtle. It gets um, more obnoxious near the edges, like towards the edge of the Apple, it's going to get brighter, and then it's going to fade out and then intensify again as it curls around to the other side. Uh, so we're going to try to capture that today. Um, and I think, yeah, that would be an example of what I consider to be kind of a dead area. It, there's something happening here, but it just isn't quite there yet. And I think that that reflection is going to really help bring that out. So I'm going to pull out a teeny tiny brush. Hi, Maddie. Maddie's my sister. She's really talented. If you're not already following her or if you haven't liked her page, Maddie Fusco Illustration. I think you should. Um, I confess to a little bias, but I still think you should. I think all bias aside, I think I would still be making the same recommendation. Um, cool. All right. So, so I'm mixing up as subtle a uh, reflection color as I can. I want it to show up, but it needs to be nuanced because it is not very bright, and it would be easy to get carried away with this. But um, it does follow along that shadow ridge there. So um, let's see if we can. And I am going to place my hand on the painting today since we have some dry spots just to get this right. And let's just see how that feels. Oof, you know what? Not quite the right color. I need to gray that out a little bit. Just a little bit. And if you're just joining us, this is Art Force Iowa's Artful Connections. My name is Jonathan Fusco, 
working on an in progress still life. Um, now working from a photo. Um, invite you to paint along, draw along with me. Uh, and if you are, we'd love to see what you're making down in the comments below. If you're just hanging out today, that's cool too. I'm just gonna. I know this color is gonna look good up here, so we're just testing it out. That might be closer to the color, but I think we're still a little too intense. So I'm gonna mix some more of the red back in, and now we'll see. We'll see how this feels. All right, so. Cool. I think that's what we want. Um, it won't look like much yet. I'm going to intensify it as we get to the edges, but right now we're just going to carry it across the apple. I'm looking at my image as much as I look at the painting. Cool. Cool. All right. Yeah, that's not bad. Not bad. Although I'm seeing some unfinishedness over on the edge. You know how you stare at something so long you don't really notice it till you notice it? Well, we're going to fix it. Push that back a little. It's all just pushing and pulling, you know. And learning how to see what needs pushed and what needs pulled. Cool. All right. All right. Now this is getting really dead in here. Um, so something else we can do while we're working on this area. So I'm going to darken that kind of bright, cool red I had earlier um, by throwing a little bit of um, canacridone magenta. I don't know what canacridone is. I assume it's the name of the pigment. And yeah, it's a magenta. It's a, it's actually a pretty deep, <laughs> it's a pretty deep purple uh, is what it looks like. Uh, and it, it'll add quite a bit of darkness. And then I'm going to use a light magenta, which I don't know if that's canacridone or not, um, to kind of mute it a hair. And then just to bring, this might be too bright. No, it's not. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. I don't think that's too bright at all. Um, we're going to sort of try to, yeah, round out this apple a little bit. Because um, the shadow is fine, but it's a little bit strong and it's a little bit flat. Um, it was a good start, but it's not really where we want to land. And I'm actually going to bring this up just so we have a little connector there. Yep. Cool. Yep. Cool. All right. Anywhere else? So as I'm doing this, anytime I mix up a color, this would be the color in question. Uh, can we see that? Kind of. Yeah, there we go. That's a pretty good shot. Um, once I mix up a color, um, the next thing I start doing is I start looking around the piece. Okay, where else can I add this where it will make sense? Um, and maybe you find that, no, it only works there. But usually, you can find somewhere, some other place that you can put it. Uh, it's a great way to unify a piece um, to make sure that any color that shows up in one place shows up somewhere else. Even if it's just a little dot, uh, it really can make a big difference. You don't really want to have a piece that feels really piecemeal, like, oh, all my reds are on that object, and all my oranges are on that object. and all the other, you know, my blues are in that object, and then just like, I mean, you can do that. Maybe it's a stylish choice, but um, it is. If, if, but then, if you're doing that, then it needs to be an intentional decision to make everything feel separate. If the goal is to create a unified atmosphere, if you want things to feel like they're sharing a space, then you want to use a red in here. I need to make sure that that red shows up somewhere else. Maybe it's just a little bit of a dash of a reflected light on the edge of the bottle. Maybe it's just that same red in here. Um, or in this case, we have reflections, and the reflections kind of help us to uh, make sure that at least it shows up there. But um, or or maybe you just mix it into some of the shadows that show up somewhere else. Um, or in the case of the coffee cup, I'm going to be adding a little bit of warmth, more warmth than I have um, along the inside. Um, I think to kind of approximate like uh, 
like the red is bouncing around inside of the mug, um, that kind of thing. Or maybe even like the cloth, um, having some of the cloth reflect the color of the mug, vice versa, that kind of thing. Um, of course, the color of the object really makes a difference. Like the mug is pretty light, so the mug is going to want to reflect a lot of what's around it. Um, and yeah, I'm mixing up kind of a pinkish, grayish, pale kind of tone um, for the edge of the apple. I don't think we want to go much brighter than that, at least not for the bulk of this. Let's just see how it feels, though. Hmm. Okay, so I don't hate that. I just need to blur it a little to match the photo a little better and to accentuate, yeah, that roundness. And it happens a bit on this side too. So again, I'm following the shape of the apple. Um, which is informed by the photo, but also I have like my marks I've already made establishing what I consider the surface of the apple to be. So every time I trace along the apple, I'm just considering that shape. Almost like I'm running my brush over a three-dimensional object and, and moving my brush in the way that it would move over, the, over it if it were um, in three dimensions right in front of me. I just had coffee. My hands are a little shaky. You can make a case that a drawing or a painting is just a seismograph for your neuroses. Or maybe just how much caffeine you've had today. Which in my case might have been a little bit too much. A little bit too much, maybe. If you're just joining us, this is Art Force and I was Artful Connections. My name is Jonathan Fusco. I'll be your artist mentor today, uh, working on an old uh, still life I never finished. Actually, from a couple weeks ago on one of these streams, I talked pretty big game back then that I was going to finish it, but I super didn't, so we're doing it today. Um... Presently, what I'm focusing on is establishing, and mostly what I want to see happen before I call this thing done, is just um, build up that sense of dimension uh, and create a little bit more visual interest uh, throughout the surface of the piece. Right now, we have a lot of dead spots that are just a little more dead than I would like. Um, it's kind of all over the place. So a lot of this kind of, this part of the process can kind of drag out. Uh, it's a lot of tiny mark making. Um, but it really pays off. It's just all the little things. Yeah, so actually, one other thing that we can do. Um, so I have this, it's, it's just kind of like a stripe right now. And um, there's a little more to it than that. So I'm going to try to capture a little of that where it kind of fades out towards the bottom there. And yeah, if you're just joining us, I do invite you to paint or draw along with me. Uh, we would really like to see what you're working on in the comments below. If you're just hanging out today, that's cool. If you have any questions, um, actually, this new setup, I can see the chat pretty well. Um, and if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Otherwise, yeah, just sit back and enjoy. One of these days, I'll get a mic on the canvas. I think that's one of the most delightful things about watching someone paint is that sound. Um, I'm hoping that the mic is picking up at least a little of that, because that's one of my favorite things about watching people paint is just that little tiny impact sound. 
Hope everyone's having a happy Monday. I don't know where everyone is, but here in Des Moines, it smells, looks, and feels like rain. Me, I don't really mind the rain. I kind of like it. Um, I find every time it rains, too, that our grass gets a lot happier. And this time of year, um, we didn't have grass for the longest time. And we finally got it to take last year. And it still is a little sad and still kind of just clinging on. So every time it rains, it looks happier. And that's always cool. Those rainy days are a good time to get stuff done. Get your stuff done. All right, so I'm going to move on from the Apple for a second, um, in part because I'm getting a little frustrated. Uh, so we're going to just cut it out for a moment, and we're going to switch gears because, um, yeah, no, I mean, I don't know what everybody else does when they get frustrated, but I find that it's uh, usually a good opportunity. It's usually a pretty good opportunity um, to switch gears and move on to another object or another aspect of the... It still needs attention, but you haven't um, gotten to. And that way you don't just stop. You know, you don't want your frustration to let you just stop. Because then you'll never get the dang thing done. <laughs> Hi, Audrey. Thank you for watching. Audrey's also my sister, also very talented. If you ever need printing done, I recommend hitting up Studio Fusco in Indianola, Iowa. Sorry, I didn't just come on here to plug my family today. But but I can do that a little bit of that too. All right. So, um I am mixing up a much more yellow orange right now. Um we're going to get a little bit loud, I think, with this orange. Why not? Let's get loud. Um, the naphthol red is what I use for um, yellowy oranges. Naphthol red is kind of a nice, bright, a little bit yellowy. It's a little yellowy. Um, but it's really strong, so I have to use a bunch of the cadmium lemon for our yellow to overpower it, and then I think we'll do flake white. Technically flake white replacement. Uh, flake white was made with lead. They do not make it with lead anymore. I'm sure it was awesome when it was made out of lead. I don't think they would have used lead if it wasn't awesome. Um, but I've never done a side-by-side -side comparison between the replacement and the real deal. All I know is that um, traditionally the original Flake white was used often in skin tones. I think in part because it was uh, translucent. It kind of a, it was it was good for layering. Um, I find it's very tacky, and I think that's also something else it was known for was for building up like thick, thick paint. Um, so like if you're doing impasto, it can be really handy. Um, cool. Yeah, my hands are shaking today. That's okay. So um, the brighter I make this orange, you'll notice it kind of starts to look a little bit stranger um, against the fabric. So what we'll be doing eventually, and this isn't in the photo, this is kind of, again, this is just about unifying the piece. You're sort of taking in reality and you're putting it in italics. Um, we'll be taking some of the orange here and we'll be reflecting it um, in the fabric. A little bit. Just kind of like it's catching some of that bouncing light. And it, yeah, in reality, it is happening. It's happening a little bit. It's just not as noticeable on dark fabric. Um, and I'm just going to be playing it out. And yeah, in the photo, I can barely see it. But in life, I could see it more. I just know that. And I think for the sake of the painting, it'll be cool. So we're going to do it. And what I'm mostly doing right here, yeah, just kind of tracing my highlight. This is not going to be the brightest spot on the orange, I don't think. Pretty close. 
And what we'll probably do is we're going to make a little transition area too because that's a little bit much. So I'm going to take that same orange and then just kind of throw it into the red I had mixed up for the apple. See now reusing that color that I was using for the apple and then having it show up a little bit in the orange too. Again, just a unifier uh, to kind of create a consistent palette throughout the whole piece. Um, like they're all sharing a space, which they are. Well, not anymore. Now it's a photo, but they were. Some ways working from life is easier, and some ways working from a photo is easier. Finishing from a photo that you started from life is a little funny, because it's never quite exactly what you saw when you were sitting. Or at least, maybe I, at least in my experience, I'm not real good at capturing exactly the same perspective, but you can usually get enough information to glean what you were seeing. But I'm excited about this one. I think it'll be cool. Um, I like this bottle. Uh, painting growlers is fun. And then, yeah, the apple inside the mug. Um, they, they seem a little bit too unified right now. Like the apple and the mug kind of seem like one object right now, which part of me doesn't hate, but I do want to create a little bit more of a distinction between them. So now that I've spent a little time on the orange... We're going to bounce back to the apple for a second. In particular, I just really want to make... Well, no, that's going to be too bright. Let's try that color. So I think what we want... Yeah, 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 right there. Cool. Ooh. You know what? I think that might be too pointy. I might have to pull that back. But I like that color. Yep, that's too pointy. I'll have to pull that back. And a really easy way to do that, especially in the situation we're in right now, since it's like everything's up here is dry, I can just wipe that away. But I like that color. And I think uh, once I throw a teensy, teensy reflected light highlight on there, um, that's going to help with that. You know, it's a searching process. You never, I mean, I, I don't, I mean, there are people who probably know immediately what to do every single time, but I find I'm always having to reinvent the wheel a bit. And yeah, then that color actually needs to come over here too. And it traces along the backside. Perfect. And we're just gonna go over the stem. We can paint over it again here in a second. And if it's bothering you seeing that, even we can do that right now. I guess it's maybe I'm projecting. It's bothering me a teensy bit, just a little. And actually, we're going to throw some orange into this part. I think that's going to look cool. And just see how that feels. I don't know, it needs to be darker, but I do like that tone. Or that hue will make it a little darker. Um, and how am I making it darker? I'm using the magenta again, Canacridone magenta. It makes it a little more of a brown, but I'm keeping it as orange. More orange, at least, than it was. Cool. And, yeah, I don't think... I don't think that's bad for the core of it. Um, we'll probably go along the edges with a darker... Or, no, we'll do it darker now. Um, I have a brown pink. On my palette, it looks a lot darker than it is, but then I put it on the painting, and it's like, oh, that's actually still pretty bright. So we'll do brown pink. I'm going to throw a little more magenta. Still keeping this on the orange side of brown, but it's getting a little brown. Let's drop that in. Nice. That's more like it. That's more like it. What else can I do while I'm over here? Um, there's a really cool, like, kind of the yellow, that yellow, like, ring. Uh, I don't know how to 
refer to it basically where it all bunches around the stem. That's pretty yellow. And it's also an opportunity to use some of the same colors we were using in the orange again. Um, so we're going to try and drop some of those in and see how it feels. Let's just see how it feels. And I think the wise move, honestly, if I had been thinking a second ago, would have been to do this first. And then put the stem down, because now I'm going to have to kind of dance around the stem, which isn't ideal. Don't do this. Do as I say, not as I do. Because, yeah... Front to back, whenever you can, whenever you're thinking ahead enough, try to paint front to back. But that yellow looks awesome. And there is a little bit that comes over this crest right here. Yep. Yep. Just like that. Um, I think we have a little more, though. Let's see if I can just get it with the corner of the brush. Not quite what I want. Um, we'll use a tinier brush. There's the answer. Simple enough. Cool. And then a little bit kind of... Frankly, a lot of that dip visually is defined by that yellow ring. And just in that classic push-pull dilemma, we're going to push some of that yellow back just a hair. Just a hair. Whoop, like that. That's the sound it makes. Cool. Cool. All right. And actually, there's a super big detail that we're missing on the apple that I was putting off until I kind of got some of that a little more defined. Um, we're going to do it soon. I'm just going to do a little more up top because I think the top of the apple is a lot more important than I've been giving it credit. The top of the apple kind of defines all of the lines that radiate down and trace the shape. You can see how I mean when I say, like, this part of the process just takes forever. Like, I don't think we're going to finish this today, but we're going to make some good progress. Already we've made good progress. Um, when I say we won't finish this today, what I mean is we won't finish it today in an hour on camera. All right. And yeah, you'll notice I'm just going to bounce around a little bit to some of the other objects. Ooh, no, 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 I'm gonna, see now I'm, I get, I get distracted. All of a sudden I really wanted to start making marks here, but I'm going to have to change the color a little bit. So before I ch change the color that's on the dang brush, we're not going to get distracted. We're going to keep that on the brush and do something else really fast. Um, before I, cause I, I don't, yeah, I'm tempted now to like make that orange a little browner so that I can put it into the bottle by brown I think what I actually mean is purple since that's such a violet bottle we'll probably just throw a little violet into the orange which will basically make it brown um, but the color you mix into it matters because that's that's the that's the, the color of the surface it's reflected and that's what's tinting the color um, okay so what have I done I grabbed another brush I cleaned it really quick because it had a slightly slightly different color on it and we are going to mix some brilliant pink in with um, titanium white and I'm going to throw a little flake white in there just because I like the tackiness. I think that'll help set on top of the apple. What we're doing is we are going to be hitting the reflection on the apple. There is a really bright spot that I have been ignoring. I don't want it to be white white 
Like, I just don't want that. Um, is there anything wrong with it being white-white? I mean, it's white in the photo. Maybe I'll add a bright white spot in the center of the color I'm about to add. But what I'm mostly mixing up is kind of... Um, it's like kind of a bright red, but with but, but very, very light. So I guess I'm aiming for kind of a bright-ish pink. And yeah, I like the flake white because it's got that tackiness, and I think it's going to be nice and chunky. Um, that's my hope. But the titanium white is there to, like, really make it white. Um, titanium white is almost too white. I use it a lot less frequently now, but for stuff like highlights, that can be really handy. I know some artists who did a challenge somewhat recently where they were, like, of several artists where they were doing, uh, they were painting without white. I think that'd be an interesting exercise. Um, probably going to try that and just see how it feels. All right, so what happens when we do that? Yeah, see, that's not white, but, you know, once you put it on there, it kind of may as well be all things relative. I'm, we might not actually need to add pure white to that. Um, and in fact, I'm going to switch to a different brush and kind of create a slightly less bright version of the same thing to fade out from that and kind of trace along the shape of the apple. Yup. Yup. That's the stuff. Cool. Oof. Not quite right. Not quite right. And um, if you're just joining me, I see the numbers have been fluctuating a bit. Um, this is Art Force Iowa's Artful Connections. My name is Jonathan Fusco. I'll be your artist mentor today. We are working on an in-progress still life. The um, still life has been dismantled, but I have a photo of it. I am working from said photo. And bring some of that in. Yeah, we invite you to paint along. Uh, with me, or draw, whatever you like. A lot of these same tricks apply to any medium, really, if it's a flat medium. And we'd love to see what you're making. Uh, and post it in the comments below. If you're just hanging out today, welcome, welcome. Super stoked to have you. That's cool, too. If you've been uh, watching me on Mondays, you might recognize this piece. I did it a few weeks ago, and at the time I talked real big that I was going to get it done. I'll finish it later today or later this week, but like I already had like two or three other things I was trying to do that week, and I think I finished one of them. Uh, this didn't end up being one of them. And it's just been kind of sitting in the room. But I, I want to get more of this stuff done, because I'm... Um, Hey, this is a really good time to do still life while we're all kind of cooped up inside. And still life can be a really, um, well, there's something kind of in, intentional and decorative about it, for one thing. Um, it can be, it's like, it can be really moving in strange ways. Like, you can do a lot of really cool things with it without it having a face on it. Um, I guess I'm just sort of interested in that, that, uh, that, you know, it doesn't have to have a human face for us to feel a connection to it. And of course the objects we select, that's kind of a personal process as well. Like if you were painting along with me, I, I wouldn't necessarily encourage you, oh, paint exactly what I'm painting. Um, so I'm going around and I'm looking for parts of the apple that need to be brightened up. Because as soon as I did that, everything else in the apple feels dark. Um, so... Again, just consistency. Um, there are a couple spots of the apple that could be brightened up. And again, I'm basing those decisions on uh, my image, uh, my reference. And so I see that, like, the inside of the apple, like this little plane right in here, this that little chunk, catches a fair bit of light, um, especially right around the stem, which also will help bring the stem forward. Um, that contrast. So, kind of a win-win. 
Carving these in. Yup, like that. Yup. So, um, from here, um, I had that super bright yellow I was just using. I'm just going to mix that up with a little more orange uh, and carve in a little bit more of this little ring that I kind of missed earlier. And while I have this color, I'm going to think to myself, huh, where can I use this bright orange or reddish orange? Well, I have a feeling you know where we can use it. How about the orange? We'll put it in the orange. Again, the orange is going to need some work. Um, I think once we really get going on it, it won't go that... I think it'll be done pretty fast, which is one reason why I'm just kind of throwing colors at it for now. Um, when it really comes down to defining the surface of the orange, um, we have mostly all the information there we need. Um, there are just some like little like radial lines, that kind of where the little that little um, nubbin at the top that kind of puckers. Um, so like little radial lines that catch light. Uh, we'll be adding those at some point, but for the most part, we've got a really nice base there. And I don't want to overdevelop the orange. Um, I kind of want to see how the rest of the piece feels, the stuff that's going to be harder <laughs> feels, um, before I make big decisions um, on the orange. I guess I could be letting the orange run the show. I'm just not. Like, that's, and that's arbitrary. It's just that that's a totally arbitrary decision to do it this way. So I've mixed up kind of a brownish highlight. Is that too bright? Ugh, that's still too bright. All right, we're gonna dull it. We're gonna dull it. Throw a little orange in there. Cool, now let's try it. Uh, this is for the reflected light that runs along the bottom of the fruit. And I think this will be less bright once I get my really bright highlights on the orange. Um, we don't, we're not quite as bright as we're likely to get there. Like, there's going to be a part where I probably just put straight lemon on there, uh, straight cadmium lemon for the highlights. It kind of works as a great stand-in if you don't want to use white, but you have kind of an orange object, or even a red object, ending in that family of warm. Um, you can do it on blue, it's just going to look a little wackier, but wacky can be really awesome. Um, but if you don't want to use white, um, cadmium lemon is so bright. Um, and just to show you what it looks like on its own, I don't know if I've ever shared this one on my palette. Um, yeah, it's, you can kind of, you, you might immediately recognize that it's next to the orange. Um, right there. Um, yeah, that thing is, I mean, you can see next to the white, it might not look that bright, but next to every other color... Um, it may as well be a white. And and it conveys more atmosphere than white does anyway. White is almost a lack of information on its own. Don't really want that. I mean, anything is a lack of information on its own, but um, just like with our associations of, of a blank slate and a white, I don't think it's as effective, which is why I don't use a lot of straight white. Right now, there is no just white on this painting. Um, all of these dots have some tone to them, or pardon me, some tint or hue. Hue is the word. If we're checking our vocabulary, hue is the word. Um, all right. How are we doing for time? 15 minutes to go. Nice. Well, we got some really nice atmosphere on the apple. We built up the orange. Let's spend a little time on the bottle before we call this good for today. I can't thank you guys enough for joining me. This is a joy. I've been doing a lot of drawing, and I, it's just been really nice to sit down and paint at least once a week. Painting just feels good. All right, so um, right now I'm looking back and forth at my image and at my painting. Uh, I'm trying to make some big decisions. How do we proceed with the bottle? Um, I'm trying to remember what I was doing last time and trying to project it forward. How do I finish it? So 
I'm kind of mixing up a color while I think I think I know what I'm gonna do. There's um kind of a let's see if I can show you. Yeah, there's a sort of oops. Okay. There's a sort of like ridge of of like reflected light that kind of traces along that I haven't really fully established in the painting proper. And this is as good a time as any to go ahead and do that. I think. Yeah, so what I've mixed up is sort of a gray, uh, not quite gray enough. Let's gray that up a little more. But like a gray pink. I'm throwing a little bit of orange into it, or rather Indian yellow, which isn't quite orange, but feels like orange. Behaves a little like orange, that's for sure. All right, and we are tracing. The outside, which while the inside is dry, is way easier. Way easier. If you're painting in acrylic, none of this will matter. Like, it'll dry in minutes and you don't have this problem. Um, but with oil, if you want to reap all the benefits of oil, sometimes if you want to work on, the, on a dry surface, you just got to give it a couple days. This has had more than a couple days, so we've got a nice dry, not even tacky anymore, surface. And I'm looking at my image at least as often as I look at my painting to help me make the right decisions where I make these marks. Yeah, like I said, my hands have been a bit shaky today. So bracing against the painting is all the more useful right now. Cool. Cool. All right, we have it on one edge here. Um, on the other side, bring a little balance. Um, this is a similar thing happening, but it's not as pronounced. So I'm mixing up kind of a similar vibe. Um, throwing some ultramarine blue in it to cool it. This needs to feel a little bit more. Yeah, like is that the? Ooh, that might be exactly what we want. Okay, I think that's exactly what we want. Let's try it. Um, bring that down. Yeah. So up here it's going to have to get brighter, but down here I think we have just about exactly the color we want. There's this like really nice like block, like a chunk of reflected. I think it's the wall behind, which might mean I'm going to come back and cool this down to unify it with the wall behind a bit more. But I still want some of this warmth to shine through. I think that's what we want. Then it's just gonna curve down, zip like that, red, red, um, and you know that constant push and pull we keep talking about. We're gonna push a little. We're gonna push back against what I just did, just a hair. I went a little flat. I don't want it to be quite so flat. I want this to be a little rounder. Is that it? I think that's it. While I've got this color, we're actually going to kind of intensify that roundness there, too. Cool. All right. And earlier I got all excited because I wanted to do the orange reflection. And we're here. Let's do it. Um, I'm mixing with that orange just a little bit of that purple. I'm trying to decide if that really gets me there. Um, one thing you can always do is hold the color against the piece. Let's try it. And if we have to make some changes, we will. Yeah, so don't hate that. I might throw a little of this color in there too. Into the apple, because that's not too far off from that either. Yeah, cool. I throw a little of that in there. 
Um, we are going to have to go back into this and make it a little bit more vibrant, but that's a decent little reflection. Yeah, that's cute. Yeah, that's decent. Okay, that's what we want. So let's come back with a tiny brush. on this a little bit. Oof, is that too much? That might be too much. Yeah, that feels closer. It's barely different, but I think we'll just go with it. And I need another tiny brush. I have another one over here. Okay. And I want this one to have a dark on it. Maybe I mix some more of that purple in. And by maybe, I mean here we go. Let's mix some purple in. Yeah, like that. Like that, like that. All right, and then I'm going to go back to our bright one and bring some of this in. When I pause, it's because I'm looking at the image before I make a mark and just double, triple checking. Like, is that really where I want that to go? Yes. Yeah. Not too far off there. Not too far off. Not too far off. All right, nine minutes to go. What can I accomplish reasonably in nine minutes? Um, so I am going to go back into this reflected light color that I had earlier on the left side of the bottle. And we're gonna refine that just a hair. I think it gets brighter right here. Yup, I think it does. And I kind of want some of this to pop in. Well, so I haven't done the like the the little clasp system, the lid system, um, in part because I want to get all the bottle underneath it fairly well resolved. I'm gonna switch to blue. So I have my uh, Gamsol here. It's just like a less toxic, still pretty agreeable. But still pretty repulsive. <laughs> Thinner. Uh, lacquer. Um, to clean it out. And then, it's, I mean, yeah, I just had a warm color on it. And yeah, it's going to taint it a little bit. The truth is we don't really need it to be super bright blue. Um, in fact, we don't really want it to be super bright blue. Um, again, it's a reflection in a glass. So it should have a little taint to it, if you will. And if you won't, I'll let you think of a different word. But we want it to be kind of corrupted by the glass. Yeah, so, yeah, there's a really cool reflection right here I want. That kind of has this neat thing. It's like almost like a... It's got like almost like a little foot, like a number one on it. That's pretty sick. We want that. And there's another little brother here. Or a little sister for it. All right. And then we're going to carve the underside. Yep. Like that. In fact, I'm going to kill some of that a little bit. If you get such a busy palette, you lose your color. That's what just happened. Okay. So now we're going to mute it even more. Because um, there's lots of weird little itty bitty things happening in here. And I want to start marking some of those out. Some real weirdo stuff happening. 
using that gray blue but mixing it with magenta and gosh is that too bright still that might actually still be too bright let's just see zip oh no 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 that might be perfect uh, let's try it so we're going to zip one in right here like that yeah okay so i mean heck glass is one of those things that looks really hard and it can be but it's worth noting that like a lot of glass is just kind of this stuff going on where there's just like a line that snakes and follows the shape of the bottle light next to dark um and in some ways, um, I find it can be a lot easier to paint glass quickly than any other. Like, this thing looked like glass before I started doing all this. I'm just getting more detailed. Um, and the reason why it looked like glass is that, like, we kind of just acknowledge that these, like, kind of milky, like, wormy, swirling stuff that happens in a solid object, we see that and we're like, oh, that's glass. Like, that's just what our eyes tell us. That's what glass does. Um, so, I mean, you really can approximate glass with fairly few strokes um, but yeah the more involved you get the more you're gonna get finer and finer versions of that same kind of milky snaking of light next to dark that's happening uh, just putting them in the right spots you know I think having a reference does really help but after a while you find that like oh I could just like make something look like glass on my own because I get what it does it's just these weird milky snaky things technical term All right. What do we got? Four minutes. Just policing myself. If I didn't check, um, I would go over. It's like, I actually can't believe it's already been almost an hour. It doesn't feel like it to me, but... Time flies when... Um, you're frustrated with a still life. And when you're having fun. I won't tell you which one is happening right now for me, but... And yeah, this has been Art Force Iowa's Artful Connections. My name is Jonathan Fusco. I've been your artist mentor today. If you did, make something along with me. I'd really like to see it. Post it in the comments below. If you've just been hanging out today, that's cool too. Um, just hope everyone is... Gosh, aren't we all sick of hearing this now? But I just hope everybody's staying safe. Um, truly. Especially now that it seems like the state's kind of going to be opening up more and more again. Um, just hope everybody's staying safe and being smart. Advocating, advocating for themselves, you know, as much as they can, where they can. And making art. Hope everybody's making something. Whether it's a puzzle or a sweater, a painting or a collage. Hope you're making something. It helps so much. All right. And yeah, what I've been doing is I've been talking here, kind of just the um, same basic thing, which is why it can be hard to just keep repeating yourself, start feeling a little like a broken record. It's like, yep, just kind of tracing all the reflections I see, um, making sure I'm using colors that have appeared other places in the painting, which at this point my palette is so um, mixed up already on, on the, my, on my actual, like, palette that, um, you know, they've all kind of shown up, so it's kind of easy to not start with a brand new color. And I use, I use so many, like, purples and grays, yeah, I just kind of, I kind of have a rhythm going, but yeah, it is important to not, like, introduce new color, especially if you're trying to create a unified atmosphere. Um, but yeah, you know, there are other ways to make paintings, but that's just what I'm doing right here. I want it to feel like they're all sharing a space. Um, something has happened here. Um, by getting these a little brighter, um, I flattened the piece a bit. Uh, so what I'm going to need to be doing, um, and I won't have time to finish it right now, but when I, my next steps are going to be uh, 
brightening this area. I can either dull that, which I actually don't think I want to do. Uh, I'm going to actually end up brightening this area to help bring it forward in contrast to the edge. Um, and that'll help to pop that out. And uh, we are out of time. And so once again, Artful Connections, Art Force Iowa. I've been Jonathan Fusco. It's been a delight to paint with you today. Thanks so much for your time. Stay safe. And until next week.